So in this package we have two 320 watt solar panels from Renogy. Let's open it up. It's like little elephants. Huh? So while this is a, a heavy package, it's not you know ridiculously heavy, and you can slide it around with just one person or two. Now there are links to everything I'm referring to in the description. Some of them are affiliate links, so if you're considering purchasing any of these products, then make sure to use that link, and I would get a small percentage. Panels. The panels here. I mean, they measure about what 65 by 39 inches, something like that. So they are on the big side. Um, of course, this is 320 watt. You can find panels these days that are like 450 watt, 550 watt. And of course, they would be even, you know, even bigger. These are actually like high efficiency panels. These are made with these monocrystalline cells. Like they're smaller <laughs> than many other panels in order to produce the same amount of energy. Look at that, how beautiful, <laughs> so smooth. So they have this tempered glass on top here. You get a sense for how heavy these are. Like I can lift them like this, but I wouldn't want them to be much heavier. So it has this kind of um, anodized aluminum frame and uh, it's just beautiful. So like when you're looking at these panels like this, this has 60, individual cells and each cell is like a little solar panel um, and each cell is like a couple of volts that um, that they connect in series and parallel in order to get the 320 watts so total this is 32 volts and 10 amps so these are rigid solid panels like the kind that you would put on a house roof or you could ground mount them and you may wonder like, what's the benefit of getting these compared to like these flexible ones? Um, well, first of all, they're more powerful. You can capture more energy on the surface than a flexible one. Um, they're cheaper. Well, they dissipate heat better, so yeah, they're just more efficient. Um, and they're more durable. I mean, they're not indestructible, um, but they are like built more durable. Of course, if you have a situation where you really need something lighter um, and you need something that can maybe bend to, like, to the roof of your car or something, then obviously this is not going to be the best choice. Um, but if you're looking for something more stable and something more powerful and maybe save a little bit of money, then this would be a better choice. You may think to yourself, how do I even connect these to anything? Well, these ones have these holes on the back of the frame. They are like all over, and here is where you can mount, like mounting hardware uh, to connect them to, uh, to a roof or an RV. Or... These are the kind of panels that you would get if you want to put like a lot of solar panels on your house, for example. Uh, but what if you're not at that point yet? What if you just kind of want to dip your toes in the water and play with solar panels and maybe get set up for an emergency? Uh, you could totally use something like this in that case too. You know, use two or maybe four panels. It's like when you look at them like this, they, they seem quite large, and they are, they are quite large. You know, you could either attach them to your roof, which is efficient, but kind of annoying if you just want to kind of set it up yourself. You can also do like a ground mount system, and you could buy ground mount hardware. And if you are just buying it for like two or four panels, it's really not a big deal. But if you're buying it for a whole like 30 panel system or something, you get a lot more money. Um, of course, another thing you can do is just kind of get some four by fours or something and then mount them to that. Um, and then runs the wires into your garage or your house or whatever. So these are 10 gauge MC4 connectors that are built on. So this is what you would use to connect these to other solar panels. One is positive and one is negative, plus and minus. Now let's say we want to connect these together. How would we do that? Let's start with putting them on the ground. So we have two panels here, um, 32 volt, 10 amps. There are basically two ways to connect two panels together. You can either do them in series or in parallel. Um, if you were to do in series, you increase the voltage. In parallel, you increase the amps. So let's say we want to do it in series. Let's take the plus and the minus of the panels 
and we connect them together. Now this has become one panel. In that case, you get a higher voltage, which is a good thing many times when you need the inverter or the charge controller you're working with needs a higher voltage to work. On the other hand, this whole thing now acts as one. So if you have them set up and it gets shady on one but not the other, they both don't work. Now, if you want to do a parallel connection, so you want to combine the amps together, so get 20 amps in this situation, you need a combiner. This is a combiner right here. This is actually for three panels. So you wouldn't use this in the case for two panels because it wouldn't be uh, secure, it wouldn't be watertight. But basically, you just plug, take the positive on the one panel, plug it in, take the positive on the other panel and plug that in. Then you take your negatives, and do the other combiner, like those together. And this is our negative coming from these panels, and, and this is our positive. So what's nice about this setup is that these act independently. In the case of a parallel connection, if you get shade on one panel, the other one still works. So for example, if you had a situation where maybe you, ha you wanted to put a panel, like you had two panels and you wanted to put one where you got morning sun and another where you got afternoon sun, so you could have some solar throughout the day. Well, this is the way you could do it um, because one wouldn't affect the other. And so we got our system here. Now, of course, if you have more than two panels, you can combine it. You can do two in series and two in parallel. Now these MC4 connectors here, you can either, you can either buy them or you can buy the parts and then make them yourself, which is nice that you have like a specific distance, like a length of wire uh, that you want to put together. Uh, one little handy tool when you're working with MC4 connectors is this little metal, <laughs> I don't even know what you call it, but basically you just, it makes it easier to take them out. Obviously, you can't just get solar panels and then expect to get energy out of it. There's a couple of steps in between in order to harness that energy. So depending on your situation, let's take scenario number one. You want to charge something up or use something and stay within DC. What you really need is solar panels and a solar charge controller. So let's see how you would do that. You want me to explain it one more time? Yes. So we have a, a fridge right here. This runs on DC power. Yes. You know DC power. Okay, uh, we want to charge this up using the solar panels. Yes. Yes. In order to do that, we need a solar charge controller. Yes. This cleans up the energy. So energy is coming in from the solar panels, like up and down. Um, this is going to take that energy and get us nice, clean 12 volt energy out of it. Charge Those controller. Are screws, yeah, there's screws here so you can connect the wires in here. So I got it outside and I have the cord running under the door into the shop. We have the cords coming in. Got my little helper. Cords going to a switch, which currently is on. So this is the solar power coming into the solar charge controller, into the PV here. Then on the battery side, got wires. And this is currently powering this refrigerator. A little bit cold. This does have a battery, so if I turn the battery on, um, it will start charging the battery. So let's do that. Of course, it's already pretty charged up. But you can see that the battery here started to charge. Let's see um, how much we're getting coming in into the solar. So, well, we have 37 volts coming in almost, 36 volts. Quite a bit. That's with a load. Now, this is delivering 27 volts to the fridge. Now, this is a 24 volt fridge, so it can handle it without any issues. Let's shut the battery off and remove it, just to see that it's being powered directly. Okay, here's the battery. So no disruption, it's still working. The fridge is still on. So this is directly powering the fridge using the one solar panel going through the solar charge controller. Now, this is not really normal. You usually have a battery in between here. Uh, but I'm just kind of illustrating the fact that you can power this using, you know, just a solar panel and a solar charge controller. So the panel is 320 watts under optimal conditions, right? Now this uses about 45, 50 watts. So you could, you know, actually charge up or not charge up, but you could power several fridges at the same time. However, not having a battery in between, you do want to safeguard yourself. What if it gets cloudy? What if you're not getting as much energy coming in? Then having a larger panel in this situation than what you actually are, are using uh, is a good idea. 
Scenario number two, let's say you actually want to capture this energy and store it somewhere. Well, in that situation, you need solar panels, a solar charge controller, you need batteries, um, and you need an inverter because you probably want to invert that energy from DC to AC so that you can use your normal appliances and just plug things into it. Okay, so I got my nice panel here and you may think like, okay, that's cool with having solar panels, but maybe you're like, how many panels do I actually need for different things? Like, it's cool if you can put like 30 panels on your roof, but maybe that's not the situation right now. What if you need a couple for an emergency? So let's go over like how many panels you need for different things. So let's say situation number one, you need to power like a fridge. Well, I would say you need one or two panels depending on the size of the fridge. Fridges don't use that much. What if you want to use like an AC, like a window AC unit? Um, I would say you need two panels in, this, in that situation. Now, what if we take it up a notch? Like, what if you want to use a dryer? <laughs> now, a dryer uses a ton of energy. So in that situation, what did I calculate? Oh, you need 18 panels. <laughs> That's a lot of panels. That's about the same that you need to charge up an electric car in EV. So you need 18 panels to provide that much energy. How about a house? Of course, a house is going to vary depending on how big is your house? How much electricity do you use? But take our house, for example. We use electricity for everything. We don't have any oil heat, anything like that. So we would need about 30 panels um, to, to run everything. And we have AC, you know, HVAC, all of that is running electric. However, what if we wanted to, um, you know, put everything on at the same time. What if we wanted to run the AC and take a hot shower using the hot water heater and turn the oven on um, and just keep everything on at the same time? Then we might need like 60 panels. So it kind of depends. Now I was thinking about what if you wanted to set up like a high energy like charging station for electric cars out in the desert? Um, like to provide like a ton of energy so cars could charge up really fast. Well, then it gets kind of ridiculous because then you need like 1400 panels. So it's kind of interesting when you put it in perspective, like solar is really cool, but if you actually need to charge up real stuff, it requires a lot of panels. But let's say for an emergency, let's say you wanted um, to have a couple panels so that you could maybe uh, cool down a room in your house, turn a couple lights on, you know, charge up your phone, maybe your laptop, that kind of thing. In that situation, you need, you know, one to two panels, depending on, on your needs, which is pretty good, you know, not too bad. Uh, that's going to provide you with a decent amount of power. And of course, I'm talking about the 320 watt hour panels. Of course, there's all kinds of panels in different sizes and different, you know, wattages. Uh, these are our decent size. 320 watts is a pretty good size. Okay, I'm talking about full sun. Um, that's kind of the nature of solar panels. In order for them to work, they need to have sun coming at them. And for most of us, that's not really the situation all the time, you know, unless you live in the desert or something. I would say there's two things that really affect how much you're getting. Um, one is the angle of the panels, um, but that doesn't really matter that much. You know, maybe you would get 290 versus 320 watts coming in if you don't have an ideal angle. Uh, whether or not you have sun is going to impact it, impact it hugely. Like if it's a dark cloudy day and there are like thunderstorm clouds, you're going to get no sun coming in whatsoever or no energy coming in whatsoever. However, if it is a kind of a cloudy day, uh, kind of hazy, um, you know, still bright but cloudy, then you might get like 20% and you might get that all day. So it kind of depends, you know, you're still going to get something in that situation. Uh, but for most days, you know, you're going to get some sun and you might get some spikes and then there's some clouds. <laughs> so it's like a constantly changing situation. And then, of course, the other thing to consider is like the angle of the sun is different in the summer compared to the winter. You may suddenly have a tree that pops up that have a lot of leaves on it that didn't have that in the, in the winter. So there are a lot of factors like that. It's not, you know, it depends. But having solar panels like this is so cool and figuring out how to use them. I mean, it's just nice to, to know that in an emergency, you have some power that you can rely on to make your life a little easier. Of course, if you want to go a little bit more practical, you really need batteries. But I think that's for another video. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you're doing well. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I'll see you soon. Thanks.